Hello Internet, welcome back to the World of Zero Arcade. In this video, we are going to be making our planet, this guy, a little bit less like this. Uh, so I've done one thing in the background uh, that you guys may not have seen. Well, I've done a number of things, uh, but the important one is I have, if I go back to the scene, I've taken our normal sphere and I have subdivided it a number of times. Uh, so it may not look like it, but we've got a number of additional polygons here. <clears throat> so what we're going to do is we are going to go in this and actually apply our flat shader to this planet and see what we get. Uh, I've actually pulled it in from our pre from the other World of Zero arcade project, the actual arcade. Uh, so we've been working on this in a separate series. Uh, but this entire game is going to be very uh, the low poly style. So I want to bring it in. Uh, I renamed it to the low poly planet shader. Uh, it's the exact same shader. I haven't changed the code. I haven't even opened the code. Uh, so there shouldn't be any differences there. It just has the same name. So if I bring it in, it's going to have pretty much everything it already had. The only difference is we do not want it to be uh, shaded at all. We Right now we have diffuse lighting going on. We're going to take that out. Uh, where's my planet? One of the issues with importing ProBuilder is it adds a ton of textures. Uh, Earth, there it is. So if I apply this here, uh, that doesn't really help, does it? I think it's because we don't have a directional light. Okay, good. Uh, and so this green blue is sort of the problem we were having previously. Still haven't figured out a fix for that. No idea what's going on. Um, so clearly it's broken here too. So it's not that project. We're going to ignore it because we don't need lighting. So I'm actually going to take out all of the lighting stuff from this. Uh, if you're interested in how we got here, there's two videos in a series that kind of get us a low poly shader using a, they go through the geometry shader bits uh, and they cover the diffuse lighting and how that all works. We're going to take it all out. So yeah, <laughs> so I'm just going to keep the color and that should be it. Uh, we've got the light strength, don't need that. <clears throat> and that should actually be pretty much everything. I need to revert this back so it actually uses our diffuse color. Uh, and what else do we need? I think that might be it. Uh, so what I'm planning on doing is actually doing a two-pass shader here. Uh, I broke it. <laughs> uh, that's unfortunate. Ah, we're writing at the normals. So I actually... One sec. I needed one of those. Um, the normal. We actually need to pass that into our shader. Otherwise, this isn't going to work. Uh, but everything else can go. Uh, so like I was saying, it's going to be a two-pass shader. Uh, we're going to draw both the front and the back of our planet. And so the front is going to be one color. The back is going to be a, a separate configurable color. Uh, you'll be able to choose both of those. Uh, but as you can see, you kind of get like this cool little planet. And so you can still tell that that's Africa-ish. Uh, Europe's a little bit indistinguishable. Uh, but it kind of gives you an idea of where things are without being super eluding. Uh, we may need to actually go through and further subdivide this sphere just to get us additional detail. Uh, because this probably isn't enough, honestly. Uh, but for now, this is what we're going to work with. And so what I want to do is first, actually, I want to draw the back. Uh, and so the back is going to be a, whoops, back is going to be a non-transparent shader. Uh, and then the front is going to be a cutout shader. So we only draw the shaded bits and everything else doesn't draw. So... Oops, totally wrong project. My bad. So I'm going to start with uh, two things. 
I believe we st we'll, we've already got a pass in here. Uh, so we can actually, we'll have to add another one of those. Uh, what I'm gonna do is in here, there is a call front. I could be wrong about how this works. Yeah, there we go. Uh, so what this is doing is it's not drawing the front facing things. The way this is determined is by the actual um, rotation of the vertices in our thing. Uh, so if I select this, it's not really helpful. Uh, but you can see in a, in a triangle you have three points. And those are in some sort of order. It's either 0, 1, 2 or 0, 1, 2. Kind of goes in either direction, but it either goes clockwise or counterclockwise. Uh, so the GPU uses those to determine what's facing one way and what's facing the other way. Uh, so obviously, if it's facing clockwise and then you flip it around, it's going to be facing counterclockwise. Uh, so that's how this works. Is set Now that we are drawing our um, back face, instead of, if we were doing clockwise before, now we only draw the counterclockwise faces. Uh, and so this is a interesting way to do that. So we're going to start here. And what I want to do is take away this white, and instead I want to draw a color. Uh, so that should be relatively easy. We're going to do a background color here. <clears throat> uh, so we've got the background color. It's a color. We'll set it to default. Uh, we'll actually default it to red, I think, uh, just so it's different. And while I'm at it, I'm going to add a foreground color too, because why not? Uh, so the foreground color, same exact thing, just with a different name, honestly. And then let's make this uh, red, green, green, blue. We'll make it blue. Sure, why not? Um, so we have a foreground and a background. We need to bring those in here, uh, which we can do like that. Uh, so just need two of these. This actually exposes them to our shader. And now, uh, in this shader, this is our background. So we want to take our diffuse color and multiply it by the color we're actually shading. Uh, so what did I call it? The background color? So if we multiply this by the background color, this should just get us, yeah, since we have red in the background, we should get red. And so now you can kind of see the entire planet behind. Uh, and we're kind of playing the game, which is a little bit funky. Uh, this is going to look really weird right now because our marker is actually in the on the front. And that red is in the back. So if I flip this around, it'll look a little bit better. But actually, you can't see it. So let me... So it's, the issue is I can't, you can't actually tell where it is uh, because if I dropped it on the red, you wouldn't know. Uh, so we don't know what we're actually looking at yet. I'm going to actually revert this the proper way. There we go. Uh, so this is what we have. It's a super simple geometry shader uh, that's doing our pixel-based lighting. I kind of wanted it to be a little noisy, which is why these aren't perfect subdivisions. Uh, so some of these are different sizes. I, I kind of wanted it that way. I, I thought it added some advantage. Uh, so what we need to do now is really bad. This is not something that I would normally recommend doing. We're going to copy and paste and do our foreground color. Like I said, I don't recommend this. Uh, because we now have, ooh, did I just paste the entire program? Nope. Cool. Uh, we want to call the back. Uh, so calling back is the default behavior. I'm going to specify it here just because we have it. Uh, and so the way this works is that the object is drawn in two steps. Uh, it's drawn, each pass is drawn separately. So it's going to go through and do this back. And then it's going to go down the list and draw the second one next. Uh, so whatever is defined here is going to happen second. So what we want here is something. Uh, 
We may want to cut off, uh, but for now, I'm actually just going to clip if in dot diffuse color the RGB minus 0.1. Uh, so if it's if it's less than 0.1, we're not going to draw that pixel. And so now we get this, which gets us sort of this dark style. Uh, so we get the overlay of like Africa, and then we get the other thing beneath it, which is pretty sweet. Uh, it's gross just because of the way we're implementing this. Sorry, I got lost a little bit, but uh, just because of how <clears throat> because of how this whole thing is coming together, we have a ton of duplicated code. Our entire geometry shader is copied and exists in both passes, uh, which isn't mm, not too happy with that. Uh, but everything else works. <laughs> not not the best excuse, but you know it's it's an excuse, so I'm gonna use it. Why not? <laughs> um, does it support HDR? I think it might actually. So one sec. Actually, no. There's a so we have to enable uh, HDR on the colors. I forget how to do this exactly, but I believe you do something like this. And so this is going to allow us to input colors greater than one. Uh, so you can see now, instead of going from 0 to 255, like bytes, uh, we actually get HDR. So I can take this and say 3 or something, which kind of allows us to really bloom out whatever it is. Uh, I'm not playing the game, so that's not going to work. Uh, so we can actually get in here now and kind of play around with this. <clears throat> Obviously, Cuba is looking a little bit big, kind of taking over the Bahamas. Uh, Cypress is kind of gone, uh, but for the most part, you kind of get the idea, and it definitely looks like a planet still. <clears throat> the bloom is a little bit much, so let's let's cut that down. Uh, but yeah, I think it kind of gets you that that look. I don't know if it's exactly what I was going for, uh, and maybe there's a better way to do this. I, I'm honestly I'm not I'm not sure. Uh, so the next step I think we want to take is probably to make this a a cutoff that we can actually configure. So I'm going to <clears throat> make that a variable. Uh, drop it down here as our cutoff. And then we have to go all the way to the top. Uh, we'll do our cutoff has a range from 0 to 1. And we'll set it to 0.25. Uh, and so how this is going to work is everything beneath, any anything that has a, an R value less than that is going to be transparent. So uh, we can kind of tweak that and you can see it does kind of each of the cells each of those little triangles they go away all at once which is part of our our geometry shader it's just part of the way everything works uh, and depending on what you do becomes more or less useful uh, so this you can't really tell what's going on uh, but as you add more becomes sort of harder to tell. So I think we'll probably need a, a higher density model, which might we might start running into the maximum limit for an actual model. Uh, I'll, ha I'll have to play with that on my own, but I think this is probably... I wasn't sure how long this was going to take, but uh, I'm actually fairly happy with this. I know, okay, I know it. I know it doesn't look fantastic. You've kind of got like Australia here, obviously Antarctica down there, and it looks a little bit. I'm struggling to think of a way to do this better. Uh, 
and keep it sort of with the art style because I like this look. I think it looks good, but I think we need more definition. Uh, part Maybe the solution is tessellation, but if we do tessellation, uh, that would have to be consistent. The entire thing would have to be tessellated at the exact same amount. Otherwise, it wouldn't work. Uh, so, yeah, I think that's th those are our options, really, is tessellation or do something in a modeling program and make a specific sphere that has exactly the number of vertices we can support. Make sure the UVs are correct, because uh, I can't I can't like subdivide on uh, uh, some other object. Uh, like Pro Builder will give me an I icososphere, isosphere. I forget how. Anyway, uh, the point is, this is pretty much as good as we can get it with this approach, uh, because I think we're sitting at actually not that many, eleven thousand uh, triangle or vertices. Uh, so we can kick that up about six times before we hit our max limit which doesn't sound like much, but it actually, it is. Uh, so, or it isn't, rather. Uh, so, yeah, if you've got ideas, I'd love to hear them because I'm kind of, kind of stuck, actually. So I'll play with this on my own time, see if I can come up with a solution. Uh, if I can, before I publish this, I will let you guys know. Uh, but other than that, uh, I guess, see you in the next one, so. See you, Internet.